So with that out of the way, I would like to introduce Tom Vincent. He's the president of uh, Balmoral Village, and he's been in the hotel, hospitality, and corporate suite business all of his life. And uh, it's led him to uh, purchase a tract of land. You've probably all seen it. It's beside uh, Cranberry Village between uh, Blue Mountain Mall and, and Cranberry Village. And uh, it's a fantastic project. Uh, project. Um, and uh, I'll introduce Tom now, and he can tell you all about it. Tom? Thank you, Max. Throwing away all those business yep, cards. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Good stuff. Um, well, I'm here to talk a little bit about Agent Place and from a different perspective of Agent Place. And interesting, Max, when you're talking about living to 120, God knows I don't want to live to 120. Um, my mother, who's 94, uh, she's the shortbread lady of Collingwood. You may have seen her selling shortbread at the market, and she gives the proceeds to the hospital. And uh, we talk about what's her next step, and um, she says, well, I don't want to run out of money, so I've done all her budgets. And um, I told her that she can live till she's 117, and then she won't have any money. Um, and then she says, well, what am I going to do after that? So, <laughs> well, that's planning for you. Keep making that shortbread, Mom. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I've been involved in real estate and hospitality all my life. Um, I, I'm from Toronto. Uh, lived in London, England, um, spent a number of years down in the United States, uh, lived in Virginia, worked in Washington, D.C. Um, hard to trump that, isn't it? Oh, sorry about that. I'm only kidding. I'm glad I'm back up in Canada. And being in the hospitality industry, um, understanding what service, understanding the needs of people, it was easy for me to graduate to talk about adult lifestyle living, age in place, and I've done a lot of research in the United States, a lot of research out west, um, where I, I find that the models that they have out there for people that are seniors or mature adults um, are a lot, um, a lot more aggressive, and I say that in a positive way, um, than we are here, but we're catching up. But I'll talk about Balmoral later on, uh, which is the only adult lifestyle village of its kind in Ontario. So I'm very, very proud of it for sure. I think anecdotally I've been living um, sort of adult lifestyle living through my, my mother and my father. My father passed away three years ago, um, but about 10, 11 years ago my parents lived in Toronto and I was the oldest son, not the most favoured of course, but I was the oldest son and decided that you know I had to look after them and I couldn't do it from here. So I had my parents, I bought a house and brought them up here. And they loved Collingwood, fortunately it was really, really good, but I watched what was happening and going to the hospital and going to the doctors and mobility issues and what have you. And then looking at what I was thinking of doing with Balmoral, I could see you know, right in front of me what the needs were, and I think that we've done a great job of accomplishing filling those needs for people. And so, as I said, I'll get into that a little bit later. So I'm gonna see if this technology works. Aha. Okay, um, excuse me one second because I'm not going to be able to put my notes up here. I'll probably screw you up, Mayor Max. But adult lifestyle living, it, it, it's, it's a lifestyle choice. And generally speaking, it's for people that are 55 and over and uh, looking for a sense of community. Um, it's not simply retirement home. I hate that word home, they call retirement homes. Uh, you'll notice that we call our, um, our retirement home, we call it a retirement residence. It's a real community where you can create new friendships with like-minded and wonderful neighbors. Everybody that's bought into Balmoral, I mean, when you talk to them, they really understand the concept of an adult lifestyle village or an age in place facility. They could have bought up in Popper Plains, they could have bought anywhere and had a, a normal freehold home. But what they've understood is that they can actually live in a community for the rest of their lives and downsize as they need it, but also take um, you know, the medical facilities that we're installing and those types of things will make their life a lot easier and very, very convenient. In many retirement homes, you have to leave uh, if there are special care situations which arise from you know, sickness with your spouse and what have you. 
And, um, you know, in Amica as an example, I mean, a great product, no two ways about it, but it's an independent uh, retirement facility. And if you end up getting sick, um, you have to move out of Amica. And that's the last thing that you really want to do, um, but you want to live uh, in dignity and grace. And unfortunately, you don't want to leave if you get into a situation of sickness. Um, taking a look at a community uh, with direct access to all your amenities, your recreation facilities, and your outdoor activities. And most often, empty nesters interested in, in, time, in sharing time and interest with others. I think it, you know, it's very important um, to understand that besides location, which is all about real estate, as you know, uh, the, the second thing which is most important to people that are 55 and over and are looking for their next home is transportation. And we all know people that get to be 80 years old and then you've got, you've got to go and have that uh, uh, license check up and, and take a look and you know, do the clock and all the rest of that stuff. And some people don't pass and it's one of those things that we just don't even want to think about if we end up losing our, our way with a car and uh, being able to get around. So transportation is extremely important. And just flashing to Balmoral for a second, um, we have a phenomenal location. You can walk everywhere, you can bicycle everywhere. The, there are 35 kilometers of trails right beside Balmoral, which go all the way to, um, to Meaford, uh, Thornbury and Meaford. You have 62 kilometers of trails, which you can bike in Collingwood, and I'm sure most of the people are aware of it. But um, we've got the, the bus, Public bus runs right along the property. Um, we're putting in um, ACE cab. We're going to be putting in um, uh, car sharing. So we're going to have at least four cars, which you'll be able to uh, rent on an hourly basis for an hour, four hours, or whatever, for a couple of days. So you basically sign up. There'll be an app, and you'll just put in what times you want it, and you'll take off. So between your own transportation, you can downsize. You don't need a car. Um, but it's very, very important, the whole issue of transportation. Uh, people are looking for a maintenance-free residence, absolutely. Um, I call it smart sizing rather than downsizing. Um, you're looking for a choice of housing to suit any situation now in the future and an aging in place community that will cater to all your needs at all times. What does aging in place and continuum of care mean? <laughs> From a housing perspective, as your needs change with your age, you can change your residence within the community, in essence, just moving down the street. And with Balmoral, we have bungalows, towns, uh, condominiums, rental apartments, and then the retirement residence. So we have five different types of housing. Uh, within the retirement residence, we also have a 50-unit rental apartment building. So basically, you can downsize from a bungalow to a town to a condo to a rental apartment to the retirement residence, and you never have to leave the community. <coughs> when I did bring my parents up here, I mean, it was quite a shock when you think about it because they lived in their home for 60 years, actually 64 years, and now they have to come up to a new place. And it was you know, quite a shock for them because they lost a lot of their friends and um, you know, from a transportation standpoint and aging standpoint. So be able to stay in the same community um, for the rest of your life, I think is extremely important. And we mentioned about maintaining your friends, your social and, rec and recreation activities. And from a medical perspective, you can have access to in-house or community medical care for your health support. Um, when we have our medical wellness center completed, which will be breaking ground at the end of this year, um, we'll have medical support, we'll have a pharmacy, uh, we'll have um, physio, we will have work of support group, um, we'll have a, a chiropractor, a doctor, uh, so all of the things that you're going to need, audiology, optometry, and those things um, you will be able to access in-house if you need it or you'll be able to walk two minutes and you'll have access to it then. So a retirement home may be part of an adult lifestyle community as an independent living option or with assisted living services. At Balmoral, um, in the retirement residence, we have 130 suites and 22 of them are assisted living. Uh, we do not have any long-term care 
So if things get really challenging, we, we really can't look after you, um, but in the house we would be able to look after you. The retirement home can also provide res respite, care access, and dining options to the community residents and medical offices, usually with a pharmacy, drug uh, dispensary, health and wellness and support. And now uh, in regard to housing options, um, for adult lifestyle communities, uh, you go from single family to semi-detached homes, townhomes, condos, and rental apartments, which I also mentioned about Balmoral. Some communities are prefab manufactured homes or even mobile type homes. Ownership can be fee simple, can be condominium, can be land lease or rental. So there's a number of options there that you do have, um, depending on um, your income and uh, your retirement income. And as Max mentioned, you know, that's one concern that everybody looks at is obviously the monetary aspect. They can be gated communities or open communities. They can have concierge and security is generally included. Um, in regard to Uh, the finishes, um, optional interior finishes and features that you would expect with any new housing. I think that that's self-explanatory. Floor plans are designed for everyday living on one floor. Um, extremely important. And considerations generally uh, include larger doorways, optional counter heights, washrooms with higher toilet seats, uh, walk-in showers with grab bars. You know, I'm amazed, you know, from a, it sounds like something pecuni, but in regard to toilet seats, I was talking to a friend of mine who is an executive VP of uh, Delta Hotels and he was redoing uh, the club rooms um, upstairs in the hotel and the top floors and I said, well, you're, you know, those toilets you have are very, very uh, low to the ground. He, I said, you should get comfort light toilets, comfort height toilets. He said, he'd never heard of that before. And you know, that extra couple of inches, um, if you have trouble with your knees, um, and I just had both these replaced, so I know what I trouble with your knees is all about. Uh, you know, th those toilets are very, very important. If you don't have them and you're ever going to do any renovations in your house, make sure you do, you look at the toilets and replace them with comfort height. Uh, monthly fees for adult lifestyle communities. Fees will vary based on the type of residence and who is responsible for maintenance and improvements, plus the recreation facility. <laughs> In respect to a condominium, there would be operational and reserve fees. Uh, maintenance fees generally include lawn and garden care, snow removal, insurance for common amenities, and recreation fees include programs and management of the facility. At Balmoral, um, all of the properties uh, in the rental units, all, everything's included. Um, with the bungalows and towns and the condos, um, there is a monthly fee, um, and that fee, um, depending on which uh, which housing facility you have um, includes uh, access to an 8,000 square foot recreation facility. In regard to recreation facilities in general, it was temperamental this little thing here. Um, generally there will be a monthly fee to access to the community clubhouse and recreation facilities will generally include a swimming pool, heated therapy pools, fitness, library, kitchen, social rooms, presentation rooms, pool table, card room, theater room, woodworking cap, and, and hobby rooms. And the recreation facilities may include educational lifelong learning sessions, creative arts, wellness, computer, games, cards, uh, auditoriums for theaters, concerts, pet programs, etc. What we eventually uh, hope to do is um, do a lot of intergenerational programs at Balmoral. And by that I mean um, having the community colleges and the high schools involved. Um, I think it's, it's great having younger people around us as much as we can and we can always learn from each other. So I think it's very, very important uh, to have these intergenerational programs. And I, I say this up in Collingwood, um, it, it, which I see this very, it's the 80s or the new 70s, the 70s and the new 60s. The uh, people, mature people here, um, adults or seniors, um, really are more active than any other place I've seen in the world. And I've traveled around the world. It's just absolutely amazing up here between the biking and the hiking and the golf and the water. And there's just everything that we need here. It's just absolutely brilliant. Many adult lifestyle communities are located on a golf course and some have tennis facilities. 
Uh, folks are now looking for hiking and bicycle trails, opportunities to ski in the winter and have access to water activities. Um, Hiking and, and biking on the trails up here in Collingwood is a huge draw. It's absolutely amazing. And Collingwood has literally 10% of the, I think there's 600, there's about 600 kilometers of trails in Toronto. And so we have over 60 kilometers of trails in Collingwood. So we have one tenth of what Toronto has and we have 0 .0009 of the population. I mean, we're quite blessed up here. Um, I've got a number of resources up here too that um, oops, that we have. Um, adult lifestyle communities, uh, CARP, I and mean, if you're not a, a member of CARP, um, it's a, a wonderful organization to join. Um, Ontario retirement communities, and then there's an Ontario government uh, program also. Just a, a couple of examples I have here of adult lifestyle communities. Um, Briar Hill is an adult lifestyle community in Alliston. There are 1,200 homes, including townhouses, bungalows, uh, condominiums, retail stores, shopping, golf course, fitness memberships, and they use the Nottawasaga Inn next to the development. And that's just a, I've only taken on a couple of very simple shots of, of what the product looks like, but it's very, very complimentary and it really works quite, quite well. But very, very large when you consider they have 1,200 homes. And then you go into the village by the Arboretum in Guelph, and they have over 500 single-family homes, uh, townhomes and condominiums. It's close to shopping across from the University of Guelph, large community center, tennis courts, and medical facilities. And this is just driving up to the uh, recreation facilities at the Arboretum. Interesting enough, I met a chap who moved up here from the Arboretum, and I asked him, you know, why he decided to, to come up to Collingwood. And he said two things. And, and I guess it's one of these things I you know, sort of take for granted, I never think about. He said, the water and the air. I says, talk to me. He says, well, he says, I'm coming from Guelph and the Arboretum. And I says, I can tell you, he says, the water, we have to use conditioners all the time, and the water is very rusty. And he says, the air like the pollution that we even get out of Toronto, let alone the local factories around there, compared to what we have up here based on the lake and the breezes we get and, and we don't have heavy industry up here, um, he said the air is phenomenal. So he really was coming up here for a couple of major reasons, which I, I really had never given him much thought about before. And then Balmoral Village, we have uh, 96 semi-detached bungalows and towns, which um, we will have uh, totally completed within the next two months. Um, they were all sold out in record time. Um, again, as I mentioned before, people be understood uh, what we are all about as far as an adult lifestyle village. Um, we have actually 100, it's 133 condominiums in a five-story mid-rise building. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we have 50 rental apartments, which are about 90% rented. We have an 8,000 square foot clubhouse. We have 130 suite retirement residents, which I mentioned about having independent, and we have 22 assisted living suites. And then we have our medical commercial slash wellness center, which will, under construction will begin this year. Walking distance to golf, tennis, shopping, and the Georgian Trail runs right alongside the property. So this is a, a map of the local area, and you can see Balmoral Village, and you can see from a location standpoint, it's ideal being able to, if you play golf, you can walk to Cranberry Golf Course in literally five minutes. If you want to walk to the water, you can walk to the water in five minutes. And as I mentioned, the bus runs um, right along the property also, and, and you have the bicycle trails also. And this... Um, little site plan just gives you an idea of, of what we have here. But we have the 96 bungalows and towns which wrap around the property here. Um, these uh, uh, units back out into an environmental protected zone. Um, we have a storm water management pond here which is so big we'll probably have water skiing championships on it. Um, uh, we have the 133 unit retirement residence here. The 8,000 square foot two story um, um, recreation facility is here with a swimming pool um, and uh, various 
various recreation facilities, exercise rooms, etc. This is the 50 unit uh, rental apartment building, which is connected uh, here to this building. And everybody that stays in the, that, that resides in the apartment building has access to all of the facilities here. And then this will be the uh, medical uh, wellness center, which backs onto Harbor Street. And we'll have uh, two floors again of the uh, of medical wellness facilities. And we'll have uh, 35 uh, rental apartments on top of that. That will be, we'll start building this at the end of the year. And also we'll be breaking ground for the uh, two buildings here, which are 133 units of condominium. And then we have underground parking also. And um, the monthly fees will be, um, it will include the, uh, access to the recreation center and uh, be very, very reasonable. Um, and we'll be launching the condominium in September, and you can talk to Max and, and uh, his uh, associates in regard to um, the property when we finally launch it in September, where we'll have, obviously, the floor plans and, and the costs, et cetera, et cetera. I really can't talk about the costs right now, um, but I will say that uh, because I, I don't want to say something and then have, have anything changed by September. Um, but uh, Monaco, which is a great building right on the main street of Collingwood, um, we will probably be on average about $100 per square foot uh, less expensive than Monaco. Um, and uh, so I think, it, you know, as far as the location is concerned, we believe the, the location is excellent. The property is basically 70%, uh, well, 60%, 65% completed. It's not like it's a risk factor. It, it's going to happen, and all this will be done within the next two years. Um, if you, if you want to know how things, how long things take to happen in Collingwood, all I can say is I bought the land 13 years ago. It's taken me 13 years to get to this stage. It'll take me another two years before it's finally finished, and hopefully I'll still be living by then. But anyhow, that's uh, the life of a developer up here. Uh, t things take a lot longer than, uh, than you want. So that just gives you a little bit of an understanding about adult lifestyle villages and in aging in place. Um, obviously, from an aging in place concept, I'm I know there's the one about aging in place and living in your home, you know, but I can say, you know, going through what Max said is please, whatever you do, go home and start planning and thinking about what your next step is going to be, whatever it's going to be. The last thing you want to do is, is again, as Max said, you know, with his mother-in-law, is have a fall, which usually happens, and then that creates a crisis. And then if you have to go into the system of Ontario to get housing, and I can tell you that the people that we've elected in power um, I don't have a lot of faith in them, and they haven't created a long-term bed license for 15 years. Uh, we need somewhere in the neighborhood over the next five years 50,000 long-term care beds. And our government, the new Ford government, will be building hopefully 15 to 20,000 over the next five years. So that's going to be a big push. So we have a we have a challenge. So when you talk about aging in place and you want to do that in your residence, please make sure that you've got as much in there to make it you, yourself safe and comfortable, but also take a look at what your next step is going to be and start ticking off the boxes and thinking about it really uh, you, very, very hard and very sincere because you want to make sure you don't go through um, the, uh, the government health system unless you have to. But anyhow, are there any questions that I can answer at all? Is, I'd be more than happy to answer them afterwards, Max, if, uh, if anybody has any burning questions. Can you stick around, Tom, in case? Uh, yes, I can, I'd be more than happy to stick around. And I have some brochures in, in the back um, on Balmoral and my business card. And as I said, um, if there's any interest in Balmoral, I'll, I'll be more than happy to, to give you any information you need, and then you can contact Max and his, uh, his associates uh, later on. And thank you very much. Are there tours that we can take people through if they're, if they're interested? Um, when we have the, con the condominium uh, is up and we have all the information in September, we'll have a sales center. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.